I'm learning the system as I go, like as far as how I'm going to do these videos and these vlogs and, and recaps. And, and this week one is going to be mostly a recap and some highlights of the weekend um, because we did a lot of stuff. And uh, I didn't really want to spend week one worried about a camera too awful much. I really wanted to take it super serious. And, uh, you know, my wife did a lot of filming for me. So I was able to get a lot, but not necessarily with uh, with me narrating what's happening at the same time. So I'm going to do a lot of that throughout this video. But starting off, man, we uh, it was a, a long off season getting this car ready to go. Um, it's a newer car, um, new to us anyway. So... I've been in a 2006 chassis uh, for my whole career. I've ran every single race I've ever ran has been in the same race car other than one. And all that was was a last chance race at the at the Snowflake Derby. So it didn't really even count. But uh, and it was a completely different type of car. So just learning the uh, learning the ins and outs of a newer car um, and just getting comfortable in it was a task on its own especially at tracks like Southern National, which are so different to me. I mean, it is a completely different landscape of race track than what I'm used to. The high banking, the tight corners, uh, longer straightaways, um, worn out asphalt is like the only thing that was somewhat recognizable for me. Um, you know, Hickory has some banking and fairly tight corners, but it's nothing like Southern National. I mean, it's we're talking, I don't know how many degrees of banking it is, but if you set a bowling ball on top of it and roll it down, it'd run through the damn pit wall, I think. So uh, it was a learning experience on its own. But anyway, so Thursday uh, was kind of the start of it for us. Thursday morning, I had to go down to the NASCAR Hall of Fame and NASCAR Studios to do some uh, media, social media stuff for the cars tour along with the other tour and 12 drivers and, and, and other annual entries that came. So a lot of guys got to go do some really cool stuff at the, at the NASCAR headquarters, which is, which is really neat. I mean, you know, short track guys like us don't really get opportunities like that very often and, and haven't seen how those kind of things work, um, uh, for sure. So it was neat for all of us to go do it. Um, I was pretty comfortable in that environment just because I had, kind of been in that scenario before uh not to that scale but like i've been working on i've been i've do i've done podcasts i've done videos i've done stuff I've, in front of cameras and, and been able to uh to kind of just you know spitball random things so it wasn't too difficult but it was you know it was it was really uh it was a little bit intimidating so uh that was cool that was a whole th thing on its own um we knew the rain was coming in on friday so there was a good chance we weren't going to get to practice much on Friday. So Southern National decided to open up testing on Thursday night from 7 to 9. So I had to get up really early Thursday morning, drive to Charlotte, do the NASCAR Media Day Cars Tour deal. And um, that we got out of there around lunchtime and uh, headed straight to Southern National, uh, stopped at our hotel and all right, on our newfound full-time auto racing campaign, we found that hotels sleep a lot better than truck beds. So tonight here in Smithfield, North Carolina, we got us a hotel room at the old Holiday Inn. And right next door across the street over yonder, you can't see it, but there's an Adam and Eve adult superstore. You hear that, babe? Go to bed. And then I headed to the racetrack to go make my first laps, and, and that was really cool. I got to learn the track fairly quickly. There was still several cars there, so it's not like I could go up there and make some slow laps and kind of learn how close I am to the wall and to the bottom and stuff. Just kind of had to go out there and dig really early on um, because it essentially felt like a normal car store practice day because there were several cars there. It wasn't necessarily regulated with green flags and stuff like that. Just go when you was ready. So that was pretty intense so it made it to where it was pretty difficult to still kind of learn the whole racetrack uh, we really focused on one and two uh, probably should have focused more on three and four because at the end of the day that's where our struggles really were i was able to kind of figure out one and two um and eventually uh it kind of bit us in the ass uh, in, in, in qualifying and stuff whenever we were trying to make speed but i did i was able to get acclimated to the track on thursday all right that's a wrap on uh 
Thursday night practice, the spontaneous last minute practice because of the rain that's supposed to come tomorrow. Uh, this track's crazy, man. I've never seen the place. It's super high banked, it's fast, but it's also worn out at the same time. So it's a cool mixture, man. It's very unique. This track is awesome. The series is awesome. So let's go get this thing going. And that was, uh, that was good because um, we ended up not getting to practice at all on Friday. It rained it all out. All right, well, that's pretty much a wrap on racetrack activities today. We didn't really get anything done. I mean, we went through tech and did our safety inspections and got all that out of the way, but didn't get to practice because it's still pissing rain. And as you can see, there's absolutely zero sunlight. Uh, so the track is not going to dry in time. So a lot of these guys that are just getting here are not gonna get to practice today, which sucks. But that's why we came last night because we knew the rain was probably gonna come and knew the forecast didn't look good. So I'm glad we did that. It makes me, it justifies taking off work and stuff yesterday a lot more now so especially for the guys so anyway we're pulling some lead out we was a little heavy on the right side uh all of our safety inspection all that good stuff's all done we're really just moving a little lead around right now out here in the rain uh so once we get that done we'll basically be ready to practice tomorrow um so we got another bright and early day tomorrow I was super tired this morning, so I took a nap in the trailer while we was waiting around. And uh, I feel a little better now. I feel nice and energized, but, you know, I feel like I got energized for nothing. Uh, so, so now I feel like I've got to not go drink beer too much because I have a lot of energy now. So that's going to be my biggest uh, workaround tonight is not drink too much beer. Uh, so race day came, and it was like, I think we got to the track around... 9 a.m. and uh, basically just got ready for practice and went up there and started practicing. We started off um, on our older tires and wasn't very great. I mean, it was we was kind of bottom of the charts, but we sort of knew that going in with the older tires. So then we bolted our stickers on, improved quite a bit, but I knew that I wasn't great. You know, I, like those guys were the lack of experience for me was getting the best of me because I was not getting through three and four very good. I didn't know what I needed to make it better. So just a lack of communication on my part, because I didn't really know what to do to the car to make it better because it felt like the lower I would get in the corner, the closer to the white line and I'd get, the better it would hook up. And the lower I entered the corner, the better I would get through the corner, which kind of being that I was tight in the center, usually it's the opposite, but the way the car unloaded for me in the, in the center when I entered lower it tended it tended to work better so I knew my plan going into qualifying was go out there and uh, get as low as I possibly can keep it on the white line paint the line and uh, hope for the best so we got to qualifying and ran a uh, I think our fast lap was like a 89 or something like 88 something I don't even remember what it was 83 maybe and uh, so we, was, we that was our first lap. And then coming to, you know, our, going our, we had a great one and two on the fast lap. And going into three, I just missed it. I went in, I got too aggressive. I went in too low because every time I would go in lower, it would be faster. And uh, I thought the lower, if I ran an 80, I could probably get another couple, maybe three tenths. And the pole was a 40. So I knew that I needed to get down to the 60s at least to be mid-pack. So I tried to pick up an extra couple tenths and I just hit the apron got really loose, lost all the forward drive off the corner and uh, just screwed us and ended up having to take the first lap as our fast lap, which put us 29th, which was extremely disappointing for me because I knew we should be a, we're a top 20, it was a top 20 car and I, I feel confident I'm a talented enough driver to, to, to put us in the top 20 week in and week out. So uh, that was disappointing and frustrating for me and I was pretty down in the dumps after that. But uh, I knew the job going ahead was to keep the car clean and uh, finish the race. So that's that was our next step.
Uh, so green flag, we obviously start in 29th, and there's such a ridiculous closing speed there. Uh, when everybody gets stacked up in the center of their corner uh, early in the race like that, when everybody's nose to tail, you just have to jam on the binders. And I was just getting nervous by what was behind me. And I didn't. I felt like I was going to get ran over. So I started kind of looking on the outside a little bit to see if I could make up a spot or two, kind of like you would do at Hickory. And uh, I think that's kind of what burnt my tires a little too much early. I shouldn't have went and looked outside. I should have just rode through a parachute. But I thought if I fell to, you know, dead last, I would get lapped pretty quick. And uh, just it's just a lack of experience. I should have, you know, I'll take that one on the chin. That's my fault. I should have, uh, I should have just rode, been patient, picked off one or two at a time. Um, but... You know, it's also difficult to pick cars off because you're looking at, you know, 30 of the best late models in the in the country, and uh, they, you know, it's just hard to pass anybody. Like no nobody's gonna pull over for you, and uh, I got you know chopped off multiple times and, and uh, blocked and, and just kind of ran really hard for really no reason. And I knew they would come back to me, so I kind of just settled in, took the Took that run and just waited for the competition caution. Or well, actually, a caution came out on that. I think around 25, and and uh, so I got to get my bearings back and ended up making a little bit of ground before the competition caution. And stayed on the lead lap, which was a goal. We knew it'd be tough with all the with the, with the you know the mid pack back of the field just going to be slower and and wrapping the bottom. So. Just couldn't make any headway, man. That, that was tough. Like, I was trying to be patient. I didn't, the sun was really bad uh, in my eyes and stuff, and I'm not comfortable in that car yet. So, I didn't really know where my right front or left front exactly was. And, you know, my, my old car, I could be an inch from the wall and be comfortable. In this car, I feel like I'm, you know, two foot from the wall, and I'm not really sure if I'm there or not. So, stuff like that is just something I'll get used to over the next few races, um, especially at a track like Hickory coming up here in a few weeks. That'll make things a little bit easier on me because I can, you know, I'm used to that racetrack. I know where I need to be. So, and you know, if the first race of the year was Hickory, I'd feel a whole lot better than the rest of the year. But the first race of the year was Southern National, which is probably going to be the hardest racetrack for me. Um, and just learning the new car and, and then also the sun in my eyes and the qualifying bad. It was a tough scenario, but the goal was to keep the car clean and, and we ended up doing that, but not from a lack of uh, others effort. We got around a few people that really, really like to just chop you off and kind of expect you not to just drive in there and wreck them. I mean, the way the corners bank, if you get into somebody, they just get loose in front of you and then you have to let them gather it up because you can't go around them on the top or obviously the bottom because it's just such a big transition in banking down to the flat. So uh, it was very tough to get around anyone. And then um, so that was kind of the story for the whole race uh, was that. I mean, there wasn't a lot of, I mean, there was a lot of action for me, but like it was essentially just trying to keep the nose on it, trying to not, you know, knock every damn wheel off the car. Uh, we just get around a few. We got jacked up a few times. Um, whenever I was trying to not hit the person in front of me, I would just get jacked up. I'm like, well, God, I just, I just need to start jacking people up. But uh, it's just not how I race. I'll never be like that. I'm not a uh, overly, uh, not a super aggressive driver. I try to play it really conservative, and most of the time that pays off for me. But this week it just didn't. And, you know, that's going to happen more throughout this season. I'm not going to change my ways and values um, in a race car you know, just because other people's maybe not, don't align with mine. And, and that's, you know, that's totally fine. Sometimes that's going to get my ass kicked and sometimes it's going to let me kick other people's ass. So, um, just part of it, man. We'll take it on the chin and, uh, and move forward. But towards the end of the race, uh, we battled with a car for s several laps and he was brake checking people and, and entering, entering the corner extremely slow. So it just really threw off my rhythm. And I knew the leaders were coming and I wasn't going to be the guy that, that race like hell for 21st and, and, and cause, you know, the, the leaders, you know, change the leaders race. Um, I know a lot of other people probably would do that, but it's not necessarily my, my way. So, uh, I kind of got out of the way for the leaders and let them go. It sucked going a lap down, but you know, it's just kind of the hand I was dealt. 
and um, I, you know, lack of experience again just kind of got me to that point. A lap down, the fluorescent orange number four, Dylan Wilson, also racing with the 4F of Jonathan Finley as they almost come together in one right in front of the race leader with 10 to go. Brandon Willard is working hard with that blue flag, and Dylan Wilson will heed to it as McCaskill puts Kale Gale, Dylan Wilson, and now Jonathan Finley goes a lap down to your race leader in Deke McCaskill. Between McCaskill and the runner-up, here they come out of turn number four. Wilson yields. Finley nearly gets turned around by Kale Gale, who darts to the bottom with Quapple three wide up top. Quapple going to stuff it in three wide on the top side, and he's going to be able to clear Jonathan Finley. You'd imagine that Kale Gale will lift here and let Carson Quapple to the bottom. That indeed he does, and Quapple in a... So, uh, let the leaders go, ended up 23rd. Uh, wasn't at all my goal. My goal was to finish top 15, and but I did accomplish the goal of finishing the race, have, ever, you know, no, no big no damage really at all um and so that's that felt good at least to to, to bring that car home in one piece now we can work on it we can go test at florence we can go get ready for practice day and be able to be have a little bit better understanding of florence uh going forward i don't you know i don't know a whole lot about the track i haven't been there so it's not like my expectations are super high there either i mean I, I obviously the goal is to go there and uh and finish the race again but this time i'd like to finish the race obviously in the top 15 or so um and then we'll start working our way towards the top 10s and i know it's going to take several races probably to get there consistently but uh but we're not far off i mean the result doesn't show it but the car does have speed I, i'd like to think of myself as a someone that can can, can definitely drive uh that car to to wins eventually but most importantly consistent top tens and top fives and stuff like that especially at tracks that i know so uh, it was a, it was a tough weekend but not a terrible one because the car's in one piece we can work on it we don't have to spend money on on getting it to back together which is something that i have to pay attention to all year because we have enough to race but we don't have enough to fix it every week so the goal is to go out there and keep the car clean so i'm gonna have to 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 race that way all year i should i'm gonna be more aggressive but aggressive at the right times i'm learning when i can be aggressive and when i can't be so um that's just uh this is part of the deal man it's a tough series it's a tough tour and going forward we're, we've got a lot to learn this weekend was a learning experience it was a great crowd great turnout uh, great event the race looked really good the broadcast was good um, everything was nice and organized. The rain sucked, but they did a great job with getting everybody out on track on, on Saturday. So, um, it was a tough weekend for our team. Uh, well, it was a tough weekend for my pride, I guess, as a driver, but our team, we have a good, we have a car that's in one piece. We can work on it all week. We don't have to spend money on fenders and noses and, and ball joints and, or, you know, anything like that. So, uh, we can just spend money on speed, and that's uh, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna 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 take it on the chin, go out there and uh, and try to get it done in Florence.